The entire board is present. Town clerk, members of the public. Uh, let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, the approval of our meeting minutes from April 2nd. We've got three of us here, so. Right. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2024. The second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? To abstain? All right. Uh, first, public comment. Does anybody have anything for public comment? Please step up, state your name, and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Misty Glines. I'm on 10 Brown, technically lame, unless you're mailing me something, then it's road. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say hi, and we just moved here a year ago, so my first time, my second time at a meeting, and um, I really came tonight just to say thank you. Um, I've been working with some of the folks um, regarding the new community garden, and I am so excited. And I've talked to so many people. They are excited, people who live in apartments, people who just don't know how to garden, and they're confused, and they're looking forward to help. And knowing that the town has just backed this up, um, I can't tell you. I have my own garden, but I'm just looking forward to like being, you know, helping others. It's been a great way to get to know people as well as um, I helped with the, the small library one last year. Um, so anyway, that's all I came to say is thank you, and I hope you can feel the excitement in the town because I have yet to talk to a person that went, eh, seems kind of okay, I guess. It's been sheer enthusiasm, and I hope that encourages you guys as well. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Mr. Anybody else for public comment? I'd just like to make a comment. As uh, some people might have noticed, I haven't been around for a little bit, um, is my wife, Terry, had a stroke on February 6th, and uh, she's doing very well. As um, she uh, wants to come back to work anytime, <laughs> is but I want to want to just reach out and uh, thank a few people, um, especially the Berwick first responders. Is uh, they were at our house within a matter of minutes and transferred her there to Wentworth Douglas, where they immediately put her on a helicopter and flew her to Mass General. Um, is I also want to thank the American Legion Post. Is the day after the stroke, they reached out to us to ask if there was anything they could do to help us. Um, and they've been a big support ever since. I'd also like to thank everybody else in town who has reached out and offered their help. It's been a long, hard road for us to travel, but we couldn't have done it without the community and our friends and neighbors. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. All right. Is anybody else for public comment? All right. Uh, public hearings. We have several renewals of uh, marijuana facilities. The first is the Adult Use Marijuana Cultivation Facility at 11 Pond Road, Lev City Greeneries Incorporated. Um, is there anybody here to speak on this renewal? Um, yeah, so you knew in advance that nobody was going to be here for that one. Right. Um, James, uh, town manager, uh, he uh, emailed us in advance. Uh, they, they've had no complaints, no issues. Um, since nobody's here to speak against it, I'm going to imagine that continues. Um, I will make a motion to, uh, to approve the renewal for Leb City Greeneries. No second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. <coughs> Next, we have the Medical Marijuana Cultivation Facility at 1 Blackmore Road, Williams Greenery. Is anybody here to speak on Williams Greenery? Likewise, the um, we've had no complaints, no issues. Um, does anybody have any? 
Anything they want to say further on Williams Greenery? I'll make a motion that we renew the license for Williams Greenery at one block more road. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And the last is also Williams Greenery and the Marijuana Caregiver Retail Store at 2 Bow Street. I make a motion that we approve the renewal. Got a second. Any further discussion? It's the one that's right over here, right? Yeah. Right yeah. Right across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> We're in the wrong direction. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. All those in favor? All right. We have no reports of committees, no department reports, uh, no appointments, presentations, no unfinished business. The town manager is not present to give his town manager report, but he did send us a detailed email. Uh, about what's going on and um, I'm sure he'll give a verbal update next uh, next meeting um, but uh, mostly things are going smooth things are getting <coughs> paved psych <laughs> 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 uh, like board communications um, we have a uh, letter from FEMA just discussing the floodplains plans that we have going on to get uh, fixed up and um, ready for for the I think next this year. Maybe? Yeah, it's on the ballot on June 11. Yeah, that's what I thought. So hopefully that gets approved and we're all set with that. Um, I got an email about a housing development change, but that mostly pertains to the planning board, and they'll go through all that stuff there. Um, uh, approval accounts payable. All right, we have a payroll warrant number 77 from April 11th, 2024 for the amount of $94,312.72. Payroll warrant number 78 from April 18th, 2024 of $85,274.48. The council payable warrant number 79 from April, 4th, April 16th, 2024 in the amount of $44,452.34. And accounts payable warrant number 80 from April 16th in the amount of $1,574,626.78. All right, I make the motion that we pay our bills. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Is there a reason why that one is so significant? What's the large I'm payment? I'm pretty on sure that? it's the education one that's mm -hmm. yeah, the always. Three quarters of a million dollars for yeah. SAD 60. And there's uh, also 400000 for uh, the paving stuff. Wait, it's starting. Gorm sand, sand and Gravel. No, for the Molten Street, Street project. Molten Street. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, those are the big ones. It's just good to identify when it's that big and <laughs> we're announcing it. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. On uh, to new business. Recreation department, um, possible recreation space for after school program. Hi there, guys. How are I'm you? Shannon Rogers. I am the assistant director with the recreation department. Um, I'm here to you, talk to you guys tonight about space. I need space. <laughs> what kind of space? I need a building. I need a floor. I need something that I can do programming with that we can. Um, entertain toddlers that we can do older adult programming um, and I had this brainiac idea the state came to us and asked us about starting a before and after school program they have a need for it um, there is a need for it through the Y care there's uh, 150 to 200 kids on a wait list for before and after school care that just is not getting the care that's needed for this area yep for the noble school school system for <coughs> berwick north berwick lebanon but we would only do berwick because that's where our buses would okay. um but we need the space we can't use the auditorium because <laughs> the girls would not be able to hear their customers that's how loud the floor is with kids being upstairs versus the walking is that true mm -hmm. <laughs> is it really that loud 
Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we can still function, obviously, but having kids up there, you know, there's kids. no AC. There's oh, yeah. they've got to oh, run down to the bathroom, mm -hmm. so there's kids all over the building. Yep. Unsupervised too, that's true. so right. that's more of an issue than the noise. Do yeah. you have any suggestions? I have suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm suggesting eight hundred thousand dollars for a building. No, I'm I'm, I'm kidding. Really, I'm Next. kidding. What kind of building can you build for eight hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> um, so I had a brainiac idea to go across the street. We talked to James. We've talked to a couple of people, see what's available. We went over and talked to Great Falls. They do have a space available that's 400, 4,000 4, square, square feet, which would utilize, um, it would get us two offices. Josh and I could move our offices right over there so I could do my programming. Um, we could put in three bathrooms. According to code, if we have 150 kids, we would need three bathrooms. Um, also, according to code, we need, because there's no um, sitting space needed, we would do seven square foot per child, or per person. So that building would be perfect for us. However, there is an LOI on it already. I waited too long to get my idea out. So they have a letter of intent already for a business to go in there. So we are next on the list in case it falls through. There is no signed contract yet. There is no signed lease. And Julie and John know that we are very interested in that spot. Okay. Um, how we would, would pay for it yeah. would be with before and after care. So right now, the going rate for before and after care is between $95 and $115 a week per child. So if we went below that $95 and um, went with $75 a week, at 60 kids, which would be more than enough space, um, that would bring in $4,500 a week, um, and that would bring in $189,000 a year, taking out the 11 weeks that there's no summer, that there's no school, right. but then we're at summer camp. So um, another reason we need this space is Sad 60 cannot guarantee us any space this year yet for rainy days for summer camp. So right now we are maxed out at 151 kids for summer camp that are paid and registered and we currently don't have an indoor facility to house them. So that's another big problem. Um, when we spoke with Great Falls, um, they did do a presentation with us that they could possibly have a building, a space that big for us in 2026 at 4 Main Street. Um, if that, that's if this current one if does this not work. If this current one doesn't work for us, yep. So you would need a temporary space until then? So we've spoken to Alex Beauvert, who owns One School Street. Is it One, I mean Sullivan so, Street, so One Sullivan? Sullivan. Um, his whole second floor is vacant. And we are actually doing a walkthrough with him on Monday to see what his space is available. Um, my first question to him was, older adult access, um, accessibility. There is an elevator. He said it worked two years ago when they used it, and if it didn't work and this space worked out for us, he would put in a chairlift for us like we have next door. Um, we didn't talk prices with him. We are just kind of looking for a space, whereas if we get the space and get the state on board, we are more than halfway through a state checklist of getting approved for a before and after school program. What, what is the state, what, what are the state requirements? What is the state, what part is the state involved in this? So the state gives us a five page checklist that we have to go, go through. Um, first step is contacting the fire marshal, which we've done to see if 12 Sullivan would work for us and it does. You have to have um, the two hour fireproof walls. Um, those are up because there is a daycare adjacent to suite 121 already. So those walls are already where they're supposed to be. Um, we have to comply with local codes and ordinances. We've been checking with Irish already. Um, we're good there. Uh, we have to submit a child care facility licensing application, which we are already licensed by the state. It runs out in June of 24, uh, I mean July of 24. The reason um, we are licensed is because we were taking the child subsidy program for um, help for summer camp. Unfortunately, they have required too many hours of new training and all of our counselors over 18 have to be fingerprinted and go through 10 hours of training each. 
and we opted not to do that program because we don't have it in our budget this year to do all of that training. And our nearest fingerprinting facility is in Saco, and I don't want to put seven, six, seven, eight teenagers in a car to go to Saco on company time to get their fingerprints done. Um, well, the police department couldn't help with that? Not for the state. Nope, they have to be done at a, fin a state fingerprinting facility. Hmm. They used to have one in Springvale. They used to have one at the Sanford um, Adult Education Building. Yeah, I that's where I went and had mine done. And I actually called and talked to Jane Perkins. She's the um, the director over there, and she said there was too much paperwork involved for her to keep the program running. Hmm. So the nearest one is Saco, and that's actually where Josh went to have his fingerprints done. So Josh and I are both licensed by the state. We're both background checked. Um, our ratios for kiddos would be um, anywhere from 25 to 1 for 9, 10, 11, and 12 year olds down to 16 to 1. So depending on our numbers, we would have to hire some staff to do before and after care, four hours a day, depending on our numbers. Um, but to finish with the checklist, sorry, we'd have to do a water test. That would be fine. We'd have to submit a, a floor plan. The floor plan would be drawn up by Great Falls if we were to do it with them. Um, we would have to draw up our own floor plan if we did it at 1 Sullivan Street. And we would just have to get um, our additional insurance coverage, which we have already because of the field. We just have to get the paper that says that 1 Sullivan would no be right on. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, we're more than halfway through the licensing procedure to renew anyway for, for July. Um, so we're just trying to get our ducks in a row in case, you know, it's like, yeah, go ahead and do it, or let's see what else we need to do. Um, do you have a time frame on Great Falls as to when they're going to know whether the, that space will become or so not? So two available? weeks ago, they told us two weeks. Yeah. Um, we got a letter from Becky last week that said they do have an active <coughs> LOI on it, um, but they will let us know if that changes. They can't, they can't give us any more because they do have that signed letter of intent. Um, At one of the meetings, Josh mentioned a church. I'm not sure which one. Is that something that he looked into? So that would be um, House, House of Hope when okay. they get their community center up and running. I'm oh. sh I haven't talked to Mike. I'm sure Mike, we would have to rent something from Mike as well. Um, but that's another option. Whereas across the street at one, Sullivan is also an option. So when, those are. When is their ETA to finish up where they are? <coughs> Would it be in this year? Yeah. Um, for, the, for the church, for the community yeah. center? I believe they said somewhere between August and November that they, they were moving pretty quick on it. Wow. But um, I'm not 100% sure on that. So that's the research I've done. That's what we're trying to accomplish. So when are you, when are you looking to start this program? Is there um, like a time frame of this season or this month or so shooting for this? We asked Julie next door if we, we start summer camp on June 24th. We asked her if that was a possibility, if that building opened, and they said yes, that was a possibility. Okay. To start the before and after school program, we would start that when school starts in September. September. So you're yes. not looking for anything in this school year. Right. Did the school give you any indication as to when they'll know about space availability for rain dates? Um, they're waiting for their budget to be approved as to see what is approved for summer work for their building improvements and stuff like that. Got it. That makes sense. Last year we used the Knowlton School and we outgrew the Knowlton School. So okay. we've asked to use the middle school. Um, and it's, again, only for rain, rain days. It's not when it's... I mean, I'd love to be over there when it's 100 degrees, but we do have water, we do have beaches and lake access that we can take it to when it's that hot. But um, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at. So I guess we're, we're just basically looking for not so much, I don't know if you guys have to approve it, if you guys have to see what our plans are. We just want you to know it's in the works. That if, yeah. if we can move forward it, we're gonna try to. Um, if you approve it, and it's, it's not going to be any money on the taxpayers. It's going to pay for itself because of the before and after school care. Okay. Um, and there'll be money left over as well. And do you think you're going to go tour this one? June's going to be here before we know. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking for the before and after school answers relatively soon. What you're looking for right now is the alternative rain location mm -hmm. for that. Yep. 
Okay. Yep. And there may be, I do have an email into Mike up at the House of Hope. Um, there may be availability for us in the summertime for some of the use of the building, but I don't know if they even, if they'll even have an occupancy permit by, by then. By then. Right. So, and um, the principal over at the middle school, he's like, Shannon, just keep emailing me weekly just to keep this at the top of my list so I can make sure that we get you in there if we do have space. I mean, we can't very well ask our parents to travel to the high school. I mean, the high school is the biggest school that does a lot of the work in the summertime. So yeah. we're kind of mm -hmm. kind of got our hands tied. So. Okay. So would you have an update? We're only meeting in two weeks, right? Two weeks. We can yeah. definitely keep you guys updated. Yeah. Um, I was going to walk over and talk to Andy today, but my day just got away from me. So. Um, and I can send Julie and Becky an email as well. So I would say that uh, all that sounds fine, especially the part where we don't pay anything for it. Um, <laughs> the in terms of you know the location, uh, I'm mostly comfortable with everything you've listed from yeah. the the community center to the upstairs to the to the to the great works. Um, whatever you guys find that works best for you and as long as it's reasonable in terms of mm -hmm. price and efficiency and all that stuff then we'll we'll i can i can say i'll probably approve any of those choices okay so um just keep at it and find out what is actually going to work and when you actually have something concrete come back to us and we can approve it if it needs to be approved or or whatever needs to happen. I think that's what we were looking for tonight is just to make sure that we could go forward with it to see if you guys are all on board with it. Um, Do you put up large, there. like a large tent or large tents up at Memorial Field during the summer? Like if there's really hot days, at least there's a place to put the cool water and go underneath. We the have water. the pavilion that we have all the picnic tables under. Yeah. We do set up two canopies for seventh and eighth grade because they're kind of off in the, the okay. other fields. Um, those two canopies broke at the end of last year, you know, having freshmen put tents up and take them down. They're just not stored properly, but they all went in the dumpster. So we do have to purchase a couple more for this summer. Okay. Um, but we are, we, we do keep shaded as much as we can when it is hot. Okay. And we keep the water flowing as much as we can. And those are what, 10 by 10? 10, 10, 10? Um, 12, 12 by 12s. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I know that the New Hampshire schools, um, I don't know who comes. I don't know if it's the state police. I'm not sure who does it, but the fingerprinting, they come to the school. I didn't know if they won't come. Nope. The state of Maine will not allow us. Because when I started driving bus 16 years ago, that's what I, I went to the high school, and the state police went oh, they, down, yeah. and they fingerprinted us. They don't they do, won't do that anymore. Um, Josh had to send additional paperwork to Alabama and Colorado for his fingerprinting, and he did go over to the police station, and Jerry fingerprinted him, and then we sent him out that way. Okay. But um, the state of Maine, they make us do the electronic digital, um, and SACO right now is the closest. Great. Great. Thank you. So I just have a question. Sure. Um, I was only on there for the before and after school space. I have one other thing. Can I talk about it or can I? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So we are making progress up at the field. The field is Memorial Field. It indicates that it's one field. We would like to propose a name change from Memorial Field to Memorial Park. So um, the reason that it's been named Memorial Field is I looked back in the 93-94 town report and it said that the field had a dedication ceremony on May 7th, 1993, which gave the Berwick Recreation Field its new title of Berwick Memorial Field in memory of any town employees who lost their lives while employed by the town. There was a presentation of signs and words were spoken by the, the then uh, Christopher Rose, the town manager. Um, while we don't want to change the dynamics of the field itself, we just want to change the name from field to park, keep the memorial, 
Um, as we grow, expand, and evolve into the new acreage that the town purchased, at least one more field is going to be added up there. Um, speaking with an old recreation director, she had stated that the current field B, which is the minor league field closest to the Sullivan Street parking lot, was named Memorial Field because that's the only permanent fixture that was there. Everything else back in those days, um, and actually I think Tom probably knows exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, they were all temporary. They, nobody knew what was going to stay there. Now we have six plus fields. We have green space that we use all the time. We have the new playground. Um, we have space that baseball, football, and soccer currently use with a possibility of a softball program coming in and adult pro programs being developed. Um, we have the brand new playground with two basketball courts, a combo tennis, two pickleball court that will be paved sometime in the month of May, depending on weather and federal jobs, um, and the possibility of a splash pad coming in the next couple of years. So a park more or less brings into what our facility is. Um, but a, a while ago, would you be looking to name the fields then afterwards? A while ago, we ha I had talked to you guys about naming that field B, that original field, um, after Denny Moore, one of our gentlemen who constructed that. So it sounds better if we do Denny Moore Field at Memorial Park instead of Denny Moore Field at Memorial Field. So it's it's a. I'm thinking that when you have all these different parents. And you say, okay, you're in, you know, baseball six through ten. You're going to be in the brown field, and you're going to be age ten to then. You need to go. They know where to go mm -hmm. as far as directions and where. Yes. Because right now you show up at the field, and mm -hmm. everyone's kind of going, where do I go? Yeah. They ask, where's rookie f or where where's T-ball field A? Is it over on the Sullivan Street right. side, or is it over on the soccer field side? So it's it just it makes more sense to us. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of us. We got new signs last year for fences. It's just a matter of us replacing some stickers. And our sign guy already said he could just take the word field off there and put park. Um, so it's it's just whatever. I did have a suggestion for the Hutchins Corliss Park instead of Memorial <laughs> Park. <laughs> She's probably in there laughing at me because that was her probably suggestion. Is. But um, um, well, <clears throat> speaking of that, just an idea because this is what pops into my head is we have to name these fields. Is there any uh, any uh, potential to look at sponsorships of fields? We could, yes. You know, I'm thinking maybe some local businesses that want to sponsor a mm -hmm. field. That maybe might help with some of the upkeep in the water and whatnot. Yep. So we've talked to baseball about the whole Denny Moore field. They are going to help us provide signage for the fences. Um, we're going to provide a, f a sign for the top of the scoreboard. We're just going to extend the scoreboard up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so there is a, p I mean, there's going to be seven, seven fields there. Yeah. So there's a potential to name six more fields. And we already had two families come forward and ask if the rookie field could be named after a gentleman who had just passed away. Um, so we haven't looked much into that, but we just want to see what your thoughts are memorial field versus memorial park because it, it truly is a park versus just one one field i don't have any objections to the park no i don't have any problem with it either um do we think we want to take action tonight or do we want to do like a public hearing about it just to oh here's a public he i think you just a public it, hearing just to throw it out there yeah okay so can we add that to the next agenda we'll just have a not the next for a public hearing. I need time to um, notice. So, sure. there's no worries. Second, second, um, second. May, next time you have appropriate yeah. time to okay. post it. Yeah, um, I, think I, I, I think it's. I, I agree with you. The, the the multiple fields inside a field is a confusing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. nomenclature or whatever. So I, you know, um, I think it it makes sense to do it that way. Um, I certainly have no objections to it, but um, let's hear if anybody yeah, does and yeah. make sure before we make a decision that mm -hmm. people are gonna. To complain about but um yeah i think it's a smart idea okay yeah that's good idea. that's all i have thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. next we have the community garden land use agreement Ooh, hello well, dennis jackson uh, a goodwin street i'm rita cottrell goodwin street now, we had a draft of this last week, and it's been uh, updated. updated a little bit, and it's still got a little bit of... Is, 
is the town managers the attorney's suggestions in here as well I don't think that the attorney had any. Well, he, uh, yeah. said, he, said, he his, said he did. He said there was a, some edits in there, but they were going to meet on Tuesday, I think. Is what he said. Oh, okay. He said our attorney reviewed the garden agreement, so it's all set from that perspective. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, did you guys get a copy of it? Or did you okay. James will Yes. Okay. Yes, Today. Um, essentially, what this is is a you know a land use agreement for 20 years to allow the community garden to be in place, have some permanency, um, essentially alleviate the town from uh, liability from people using it, and um, and make sure that we understand the. Um, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it kind of situation. Um, did you have any questions about the agreement as it was written? No, we, we went over it with James and talked about it back and forth several times. So I think we're, I think we're good with it. So is it something that we need to have a vote to approve? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Does anybody have any additional Things I want to discuss about the yep. land use agreement. I'll make, I'll make a motion that we uh, enter into the land use agreement with, between the town of Berwick and the Berwick Community Garden. How long is this for? Then 20 yeah, years. Yeah, that was my thing. 20 years. That seemed like a long time. Well, it was based off the idea that some of the stuff that they wanted to install you know would last roughly that long oh okay. so yeah it, 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 it actually it, it, that, that was kind of my idea um <clears throat> it, when we were discussing it um, last month as we talked about different things and if we i've been involved in the community garden with am reader and dennis you know right from the start um not so much over the last couple of months <laughs> is um but is you know would start putting in the 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 structures the facilities even just the raised bot garden beds you know my simple garden beds last me 10 to 15 years um and these beds uh made a uh, much more durable with actually actually using metal and wood instead of just wood like i use um and you know with the uh, the pergola and the tool shed and the greenhouse and everything going in there is the idea of having a permanent fixture there and only having a land use agreement for a couple of years didn't seem to make a lot of sense to us. So, um, and these land, this land use agreement after I've, I've read through it and everything, um, <clears throat> it is always up to renegotiate anyways if something doesn't happen at their end. If, if the community garden for some reason isn't fulfilling their obligations, then the town can come back and you know, renegotiate or <coughs> terminate the agreement. So uh, it's, not, no, it's not like it's gonna be there 20 years permanently. Yeah, I'm just gonna, so. same thing is, so there's a, and maybe I missed it because I didn't read that part where it said the town could come back. Well, if, what if section the, is that? the termination of use is it's not if anything isn't there for a period of one year, the town has the option to terminate at least 30 days after a written notice has been sent to the board of directors. You know, then it describes the actively maintained what's going on and everything. So if there's nothing going on, then the town has the right to terminate it. Okay, so if the garden is not, it has nothing to do with the building you intend to put right. in or anything like right. that okay all right, right. yeah second time's motion motion the main second any further discussion do you want to add um, with suggested edits from attorney to the motion yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. so definitely uh, <laughs> the motion is to approve the land use agreement as presented but with possible edits from the town attorney <clears throat> Town attorney had already gone through it, though. Yeah, just right, but we don't have his comments in the oh, copy that yeah, I gave you. Just to be sure. Just to be just sure. Just, to be sure. just to be, you know, 
Um, safe than sorry. Um, any further comments? All no. those in favor? There we go. All right. So you guys Thank can you. continue with the garden. Yeah, yeah. you're digging away. Yeah. Yeah. No, now we can start digging. Now we can bring in the equipment. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, the bi monthly policy. Hello again. Hello. I just felt um, I. Uh, I didn't want to be the only one creating the guidelines without you guys just taking a peek at them. Um, we've had a few, I've, I get a few emails here and there, and so it'll just be helpful to say, look at the guidelines, and I'd like to put this as a form um, on the town site so people can just fill out the form, they can see, oh, does my event qualify? And so I don't have to say, sorry, it's only Berwick, I get a lot of requests for North Berwick, and you know some things that don't totally qualify for a town um, newsletter so that's yeah, good as much information as transparency as we can get out there is better yes yeah um, I have no problem with these guidelines as presented um, if you find that you're rejecting a lot of things I would like you to come back to <laughs> us and let us know what you've been rejecting so that we can see if there are things that we want to alter the guidelines to be amenable to okay you know what I mean yeah mostly largely it's other towns Trying other towns wanting to put something in the borough, and I've said no. We have to keep it very like other something towns? happening in another town. So like South Berwick wants to tell Berwick about the Strawberry Festival or whatever. Yeah, or like I've, I get a few things for North Berwick, um, or even Great Works Regional Land Trust will send me their events, and I'll say okay, I'll put the Berwick specific ones in, but I I feel like it's opening a can of worms to say okay, now there's a hike in this other town. Yeah, yeah, because once you say, once you say no to somebody else on that, yeah, then, then it's a lie. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to one. Yeah. Then you'll be on. Right. It's, not a, it's not a regional newsletter. It's the Berwick newsletter. Right, and, and some of the other things that have come up have just been town things that aren't necessarily sponsored by an organization or a department like the Run Club, which is awesome. And she said, oh, can you put that in the Berwick by monthly? And I said, well, actually, I just submitted guidelines and it doesn't totally fit the guidelines unless you were working with rec or working with a town organization or department because then anyone could say hey I'm starting this club and it's meeting and then all of a sudden it's so the Berwick right. by monthly yeah. gets really diluted with mm -hmm. things that are I always say hey tag Envision Berwick in the social media and I'll share the event right there but putting it in the calendar I, I'm just afraid it'll get really diluted with well, but I'm open to suggestions also not, not diluted but if it's too long people are not going to read it it's, yeah. not, it's a newsletter not a book and right now we have a really high readership and a lot of high clicks on links and it's like I just don't want it to be get too big if, if you get if you get past five six pages people are going to just yeah. <laughs> I'm having a tag sale and you're doing an excellent job <laughs> yes no and, and I suck at Noah with just you know if you find that something does start to pick up a lot or right. a similar interest and you're like okay I really do think this should fit there but it's not in the guideline then we'll revisit it okay great thank you guys <clears throat> thank Thanks, you so do we want to vote on these or do we are we just I'll make a motion that we accept the guidelines as presented for the Berwick bi-monthly Berwick. submission guidelines yes I'll second mm -hmm. motion to second any further discussion all those in favor Election clerk appointments. Yep, so every two years we have to have you appoint the election um, ballot clerks. So these are people who help out at the election in any capacity except for day. me and my Thank staff you. who yep. are paid to be there. So, <laughs> well, these are two. But we have so far. Janice Beeler, Jeff Day, Pat Hayward, Larice Jackson, Larry Kerr, Joseph Kilman, Terry Kilman, Brittany Lee, Wendy Lal, Drew McCormick, Andrea Umet, Christina Richardson, Reese Rogers, Joan Ryan, Ron Vigu, and Susan Webster. So you can just appoint them as the group. The group. That's gonna be my question. <laughs> yeah, and I will swear them all in as a group when we have election training okay is this specifically for just this year's election or it's for the next two years so if we yeah. appoint them and for i'm really election. hoping this list grows because we're going to need a lot more than this for november 
And uh, is this a paid position? Is that what you said? They make minimum wage. Most people um, don't take the payment. They waive their yeah. okay. payment. So I make a motion that we approve uh, the suggested appointments for the election clerk for the next two years. Clerks. No second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. So if you get more, do we have to uh, vote on them as well? Yep, I'll come back. Hopefully okay. I will have a bigger more. list. How, how many more are you looking for? Oh, a lot more, like 20. Okay. Really? Just because not everyone's always available um, in November, I'm going to need probably four tables of two people. Um, I usually have traffic control outside because the line's always very long around yeah. the building. So just someone to direct them. Um, so a lot of different positions. Yeah. You know, I like someone in the lobby to keep people in line and to direct them if one table's open and they're waiting in line. So I have somebody yelling, hey, L through Z, the table's Pull open. Forward, keep going. Yeah. Right. You know, you know what's sad? I just was thinking to myself, boy, seven fifty doesn't sound like a lot for that job. Oh wait, that's not the minimum wage <laughs> made anymore, is it? That was what I no, got to but my first job. <laughs> I wish it were more for them. Um, all right. We have no abatements or supplements. Uh, second public comment. <laughs> we all look at it. No executive session, no other any other business sub agenda items that anybody wants to bring up. I'll just say we had some ridiculous weather these past couple weeks. Oh, yeah, like that. Um, I'm glad that's over and hopefully it stays <laughs> over. And the town was plowed out and you know, but man, that was some crazy stuff. It was. But we did have the warming center open. Yep. And um that was that was good to again we so twice this year yeah we've had that and that was good to see that i know it's going to take time for people to be accustomed to it being open and to actually you know get more usage out of it but hopefully the the more that we offer it as an opportunity for people the yep. more it will get used yep. um you know, i do think it's important that we have a central location that we have so many seniors and stuff that could just come plug in their phone warm up get a cup of coffee and then go do whatever they need to do. You know, I, mean, I was out of power for you know almost two days, but and my parents were out of power for like four, almost five days. So I mean, like it's you know it was a crazy, crazy, crazy way to start April. You know, <laughs> my, my daughter pointed out that was the first snow day all year. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, like this is yeah. our first snow day. Yeah. Like, really? It's oh, April. Wow. <laughs> all right. Um, with nothing else, I make a motion that we adjourn. Oh, I second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Good night. All right.